Hi everybody, Corey Akin or Chris here, and for this next video, uh, I was asked to provide a little introduction to all the instruments in Clan Lord, so here we go. So all the instruments in Clan Lord are created using MIDI, uh, specifically the really old QuickTime version of MIDI from the 90s that sort of the default on every Mac and you can download um, on Windows as well. Uh, if I was going to do this in Logic, my digital audio workstation of choice, I would go down here to AU Instruments, Apple, DLS Music Device, Stereo. Um, just to note, if you have more than one track of this, it will crash on you. <laughs> it will 100% crash on you. So if you're going to do it, uh, do multi timbral. I mean, if this is Clan Lord, you only need three. For this, I only need one. Uh, that'll pop up here. Uh, nothing too useful over here. You can see QuickTime Music Synthesizer here, if you can read it. If you can't, it says QuickTime Music Synthesizer. Uh, I'll create myself an empty MIDI region, and because you don't specify instruments in your patch here, you actually have to go to your event list over here, go here where it says notes, pull down to program change, and type in your program, because currently it's set to zero, grand piano. Uh, if you want to be on something Clan Lord related, well, We'll have to figure that out. Maybe a nice vibraphone. Maybe a lovely harp. Uh, but we'll get to all of that in just a second. All right, so there are, let's go into m tooth over here, 17 instruments. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There's one more. There are 18 instruments in Clan Lord. Uh, the pine flute is not currently in this program. Hopefully we'll have it soon. Um, there are all sorts of different instruments, so let's get started. Uh, the first one is the one that I was just playing over here, harp. Uh, as you can hear, it's got a pretty nice full sound. You can have chords on here. Let's hear how it sounds. So while you're listening to this, think about how long the notes last and how strongly it attacks the start of the note. Okay, so you should hear the notes tend to last, they will sustain, even a short note will actually last quite a while. Uh, let's hear this. Let's hear this. compared to this, G8, G8. So instead of a short note with a pause, it's a sustained note. So you can hear it does last a little bit longer, but not, not much, or like, rather I should say, even the short notes tend to last quite a while, because if you think about a harp string, after you pluck it, it'll sustain. Starbuck harp is over here. The range that you would get is about, oh, Excuse me, let me pop up my keyboard as well before I forget, because I already did forget. In this program, although Borzon said that in another one, this was C3, here in Logic, it's C2 up to C5. On this particular instrument, you can actually have up to, I think it's 10 chord notes happening at the same time as well as your melody note. Um, come back. So you can actually sustain these big chords like that, whereas with other instruments you can't do quite so many. Uh, uh, harp tends to be really good for those sort of flowing lines where bass notes are flowing up to uh, upper notes. Uh, when you listen to it, uh, it tends to sound about the same through all of the different octaves. The low notes are very, very pleasing. The higher notes, um, they don't stand out over the, the mid notes quite as much as some other instruments. Uh, here's another inst uh, piece that's a little bit faster. So again, this uh, repeated pattern in the low part. And here's the upper line. So a really nice, oh, sorry. Uh, a really nice little piece. Um, 
And for the instrument, the bottom part sounds pretty much the same as the top part. It's really nice in that regard. Some other instruments, not quite so much. Uh, here is another next, next instrument we're going to talk. Next instrument we're going to talk about the Lucky Lyra, which is basically the same thing as the harp, just an octave higher. So you can hear this low octave now sounds about the same as the mid octave on the Starbuck harp, and here's the hot new high octave. Now this one definitely stands out really nicely. It doesn't sustain as well, the notes die pretty quickly. But overall, it's a really nice little instrument, um, especially if you want to have something that sounds a little bit more delicate than the Starbuck harp. Just in case you didn't believe me. Here's the same thing, starting on C3, ending on C6. So that's the last note on the Starbuck harp, but on Lyra, we still have this. Oh, you can't see it. And on Lyra, this high note, the high B sharp, doesn't actually exist. You can't play it. So if you try it, you'll get a bug. All right. Let us go to our next instrument, which is the... Let's do guitar before Torjo. Guitar is basically like a nylon string guitar. You would be, in fact, right over here. Nylon string guitar. Uh, these patch numbers will be the same for you on your instrument as long as grand piano is zero. If that's one for some reason, I think uh, a couple of programs you have that is listed as patch one. Um, you'll have to just add one to all these numbers. Here we are, number 24, and here we go. <gasps> that last note doesn't exist on guitar. So for guitar, C2, again, up to C5. That high note does exist, the high B sharp. So as you can hear, these notes start nice and fast, like a strong attack, uh, but they just don't last at all. As soon as you let it go, the sound stops. How does that sound on instruments? Let's find out. So you can hear on this, the low octave does a pretty good job of making a bass line. The high octave stands out, it's a pretty good job of being the melody. And once the chords lie in, you can actually get some really cool stuff. With guitar, you can only have up to six chord tones plus melody at the same time. But you can still get some really cool stuff going on. So this instrument really does well with fast running things, very active, exciting things. Rakshasa, of course, is the master of this. So with epic racking, you can hear how he layers in a couple of different lines together. There's the middle line. And then there's the slower line that comes in here. And they all stand out pretty well. Here's the upper line. And you'll have to listen to the rest of that on your own another time. It's a really good song, um, especially once the chords come in. But you can hear, nice, nice, clear, and lots of fun. It just You just have to be careful about specifying all of your chord lengths, because the notes die immediately. Same sort of thing for Torjo. Oh, excuse me. Torjo, um, which is like a banjo, and in fact, over here, it is way down here in quote-unquote world instruments. Where did you go? There you are, 105. So in this particular piece, it ha uh, in this particular program, I should say, it has a bit of an echo. Don't know how I feel about that. Let's see how it sounds in M tooth. So again, upbeat, fast song. So for this instrument, for this instrument, you can actually notice um, 
there's a little bit more difference in the registers. What I mean is the low notes sound a little bit more different than the upper notes, than some of the other instruments. Listen to it again and see if you can hear the difference in the different registers, low, medium, and high. So you'll notice the really the highest, the highest notes they don't stand out as much as they did on some other instruments. The middle range is actually probably the loudest one here. So if you want to have a melody in the middle and have something dancing around above it in the high register, that works really well. Uh, if you want to have that upper register be where the melody is, you need to use dynamics or something to make it stand out a bit more. Alright, next up would be the xylo or xylophone. Now. This is another instrument in real life. You, it's, you're hitting pieces of wood with a mallet, which has a strong attack, note comes on very quickly, and dies away immediately, which is exactly what you get in the game as well. Xylo is, oh, before I forget, patch 12, I believe. Let's double check this before I forget. Um, I think the numbering scheme was different. Oh. No, uh, so actually, my mistake, it's actually labeled marimba here, xylophone in MIDI. Uh, it sounds a little bit too wooden, so it's definitely marimba over here. And let's hear how it sounds. Do you notice how the low register sounds very low and boomy compared to the middle one? And the the high registers even sounds different as well. The three regions sound very different. Here, listen. So in this particular piece that has a low melody, a middle melody, or middle, range, middle register melody, and a high melody, it actually works out really well at making these three melodies stand out. This instrument choice was really inspired for this piece. Uh, listen to it one more time. See if you can hear the difference between the low register uh, and middle and low, middle, and high, and see what you think. So you'll notice there's actually almost a little bit of distortion or out of tune issues with the lowest notes. It still works really well for bass lines, but it is something you need to be aware of. But the high register is so clear and bright. So you can actually uh, sort of lead into that and really emphasize it and get some really nice, upbeat, bright sounding music. Uh, like this thing that I haven't <laughs> finished, but I've been working on. So for this particular piece, I really like the the bright sound of the upper register uh, contrasting with the low bass line, which is pretty cool. All right, uh, guitar, no, we've already done you. Let's go on to the flutes, and we'll think about this later. So there's three different flutes in the game that you can use. The first is bone flute. Let me just double check which instrument you are over here. You should be number 72. Now for this particular instrument, C3 is the lowest note. So the highest note we have is not actually there, it's up here. So you'll have to be aware of that when you're writing for this one. Um, it's got this lovely sound. It's very sustained. It doesn't have a particularly strong attack. And just listen to it. So you can hear for this one, um, that high register is a little bit piercing. That middle register is nice and clear. And then it gets just a little bit breathy at the bottom, which is really nice. Uh, contrast that to 
the reed flute. We'll put you on reed flute over here. Can you hear the difference? So for reed flute or pan flute in MIDI, patch 75, it has this very strong attack. There's a very strong breath sound at the start of each note, which can be really, really fun or can be a little bit annoying at times. It depends on what you're going for. For this one, again, we start on C3, go all the way up to C6. And let's hear how this one sounds again. So for this particular piece, you'll notice there's a big contrast between this part, which is mostly connected, and down here where we've got short notes with pauses after them. Listen to them and how they sound, because this is something you'll want to use when you're writing for flute. The duration of the note is very important. So same melody in the high register now. Still sounds very much like the same instrument. You can also use ooh. So those really short notes, or staccato if you're using the correct terminology, sound really, really good on this instrument. Let's try it. I'm just going to comment out most of this beginning and then we can hear how this sounds. So this is on bone flute. You can hear it sounds much more connected, much more smooth. But hear how it sounds once it gets to this part. So these pause things work super well on bone flute. Um, these two instruments, honestly, I don't know which one I prefer. For a long, longest time, I was all about the reed flute. Recently, I've been really getting back into the bone flute. Uh, honestly, it's really up to your own personal preference. All right. We also have the tuba horn, a tuba. This is an actual tuba in MIDI. Where did I put my tuba? It's here, over here. So our lowest note, actually, this time is, excuse me, there we go, C1. So for this one, we've got this nice low notes, which you can use for bass lines. Or, once you get up to the upper register, it actually sounds really a lot like a trombone, like this, it's got this beautiful, almost heroic sound, if you want. Oh, actually, hang on, sorry, that was um, writing the Drake. I've forgotten how that part goes because I've never actually played it before. I'm just trying to do it by ear. Um, Tuborn is a lot of fun as well. Obviously, there's no chords on either of these ones. In fact, I think I forgot to talk about chords on some of the other instruments. Uh, let me go back for just a second. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll do it at the end because I'm kind of on a roll and I have forgotten what I was talking about. Um, I need to take just a moment to grab my ocarina song. So this is the one I forgot to bring up already. Ocarina is another flute. Uh, this one's made out of clay. You may remember it from a particular video game. This one is a little bit weird because it doesn't have any attack at all. The sound just sort of starts with nothing. It's almost like an organ. Um, for the longest time, I really hated this in-game. I couldn't figure out how to use it until I finally sat down and really, really worked at it. Um, you can get some great sounds out of this, but that lack of attack is something you need to use to your advantage, it, rather than having it be a detraction. Uh, here's my song. It has this lovely little charming quality. 
which is why I decided to use it for this little uh, whimsical piece. Again, use of pauses to really control the length of the notes. In this case, to make it cuter and sillier, all short notes. And then when longer notes come in a little bit later, I can't remember where they come in, uh, it stands out a little bit more. So think of, again, with flutes, think about durations. Uh, same thing on tuba. You do have to think, tuba has a nice big blat, especially in the low register. So think about your chord durations when you're playing them. All right, we're getting on to the fun parts. Uh, before I get on to, no, I'll do them right now. So bagpipe. <gasps> bagpipe, yes, we have one. Of course, in MIDI, it's bagpipe as well. I believe it's down over here with our, um, so it's 109 with the quote unquote ethnic instruments. Now, just listen to that. Hear that difference in sound? There is a pronounced difference in the sound in registers here. So our lowest note is C2, going up to C5. Um, you, again, you have to think about that. Um, you can play, if you want to have like a traditional bagpipe tune, you can have a nice drone down here. Um, if you have a melody that does this, it's going to sound weird because you're going right across that, uh, let's call, I'll call it, I call it a break, sort of like the break in the singer's voice. Um, but again, by using these sounds together, you can get some really cool things. Let us start with actually, hmm? where'd you go? Ah, there you are. So a traditional actual bagpipe style song. So you can have up to two chord tones going along with your melody, which allows you to have the drone. So here, what four you did with this. I just realized you probably couldn't hear that. Let me try one more time. No, okay, sorry. I have to play this one in game. Give me just a moment. Hey, come back here. I'm not done with you. All right. So. So in game, it'll sound like this. So you can hear those drones in the background. So the interesting thing about this one uh, is it uses this particular notation with the dollar sign here. That indicates an extended length chord. This is used only on two instruments so far. And basically it means hold this chord until I tell you to do it again. So in this case, this A is turned on here, this A is turned off here, and the B starts. So instead of that, we now have the low D and the B, plus the G to make a B G chord. So this requires a little bit of thinking. I mean, this is basically programming, but it allows you to hold notes so much longer than are available on any other instrument, really. Um, but of course, we all know why you actually came here. We have, no, I'm gonna make you wait even longer. Ethereal battle is the same thing. You'll notice, same dollar sign notation, same extended chords. You'll notice this D is sustained the whole time. It's turned off here, turned it back on again, so it's re-articulated, or played again. You'll notice she's using lots of uh, tempo changes to really make it more evocative, create more emotion. Yeah. Very clever use of the loop plus tempo change allows a gradual slowdown with relatively little use of characters. Think about that character limit. All right. Stop. All right. 
But of course, as we, as we all know, the bagpipe doesn't just have to be for traditional bagpipe songs. It can also be for fun things. It has this very strong attack as well, which makes it occasionally sound a little silly. Excuse me, what do you mean I don't have a bagpipe? Let's try this again. Ahem. You'll see how different <laughs> songs sound differently on the wrong instrument. Let's try that again. So Rakshasa, by doing this, he really emphasized the start of those notes to create <laughs> to excellent effect. So you'll notice he's only using two note chords at a time. Oh! My mistake, sorry. Bagpipe can have three chord tones at the same time. I must have miscounted, I apologize. Anyway, ask him to play it for you in the lands. It's really fun. Um, yep, yeah, so three notes, sustained chords on bagpipe and conch only for now, as far as I know. All right, moving on. My personal favorite instrument, vibra. Uh, it's a vibraphone. Let's go all the way back up here. Oh, a little bit too low. Vibes is another instrument that in real life you play with mallets hitting metal bars, but because they're metal instead of wood, the sound sustains quite a bit longer, which you can get some beautiful evocative tunes. And again, specifying chord lengths, super important. Also, uh, that, that upper register, it's very bright, which gives you this, again, wonderful sense of brightness if you're looking for upbeat music like I am currently. But you'll notice in that low register those notes are so big and fat and sustain so well. They provide this beautiful pad to have this um, nice melody on top of I, I like this instrument way too much. Um, short notes also work on it very very well. Um, I'm not trying to sell you on writing only for vibra. I'm just <laughs> I, I like these songs I've been writing so you know I'm gonna show them off again. So again, nice, bright, short notes, sustained notes. Again, I'm doing fancy stuff with uh, loops here, don't worry about it. So the nice thing about this instrument is that the melodies in the upper range stand out very well over low notes. So there isn't that break in the sound like there is for bagpipes. It all sounds like one, it sounds like the same instrument from the bottom of the register to the top, but the character does kind of change. Anyway, fun songs. Uh, two more instruments to get through, or three. I can't count. Uh, casserole is a steel drum. Where did I put my notes about which one the casserole is? We're 114. Steel drum, of course. C2 is our lowest note again. C5, our highest note. So you can hear up there. It's got a pretty strong attack. The notes don't last super long, although they can. But it definitely, the sound dies away pretty quickly. However, at the low register, it lasts quite a bit longer. Uh, the attack is a little bit less clear, it's a bit muddier. Uh, it takes longer for the note to sound. Um, but you can still get some nice bass lines. Let's see what Zeppel did. Mm -hmm. 
So did you hear the difference in sound once the high notes came in? Hear the mid as well. So if you listen to that, the middle line is still pretty clear. Like the upper line is definitely there. You can hear those chords. Um, if they were going as fast as the middle line, it would probably overpower. It does stand out quite a bit. The low notes, uh, they're sort of just fading into the background just like they should as a bass line. Um, in general, the different lines, uh, they do stand out pretty well. They don't blend into each other nearly as much as, say, vibes would. On the vibra, it's trying to do that sort of thing may not be as clear. So lots of fun. Really great for short notes, really great for island style stuff. Good old casserole. Uh, Orga drum. So this one is our current, our, currently our only real drum. Um, there was some philosophical reasons we didn't have other drums in the past. I don't know if those still apply. We'll talk about that later. Uh, this is the, yep, Tycho actually. So the interesting thing about this instrument, it can only play G and B, G and B, so G and B2, G and B3, no, nope, that's not right, uh, I'm sorry, my octave offset on my computer, or my keyboard was on, I'm pretty sure we actually have that loading, because we definitely don't have that note, we have those ones, C, G1, G2, G1, B1, G2, B2, G3, B3, and I don't know why this exists, but it does. B sharp, three. That C actually exists. Um, I don't know why. I don't know if it was an oversight or it's just the way things were. Anyway, you can put together uh, in like drum only songs. Not a huge fan. They don't work as well. Uh, although you certainly can do it for effect. Uh, but played along with other instruments uh, as part of trios and stuff works very, very well. So you'll notice in that low register, it kind of loses the uh, the sharp attack you'd expect from a drum. Whoa. Whereas all of those really do sound like proper drum hits. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. You can absolutely use that low sound for a great effect. It's just you have to be aware that that's what you're getting. All right. Last instrument is the violin or violin. Where did I put you? You are number 40. Patch 40, violin. So this instrument, as you can hear, gets a little shrill and screechy up in the top of its register, but you can do lots of fun things with it. Um, I recommend, when I'm ready for it, I try not to get much higher than this note, high octave C, which is not the same as high octave B sharp. So this instrument actually goes all the way up to there. C3 is the lowest note. C3 up to C6. Um, it gets really screechy above C5. You have to be careful of that. Uh, but you can do lots of fun stuff with it. Again, if you think about uh, pauses and note durations, you can get some really cool things. Uh, you can have up to two notes of chord at the same time. So two notes plus melody. If you think about a violin player, they can drag their bow across about three strings before it starts getting weird. Quadruple stops aren't really a thing. Anyway. So you can hear there's kind of a strong attack, like the uh, player would be attacking the string with the bow. which you can use to your effect if you are using short notes, or you can minimize that by having longer notes. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't play it the way the ocarina does, where one note just sort of blends into the next seamlessly. There's definitely a difference between, or there's definitely a pretty pronounced attack on these notes. Still, it's a lot of fun. All right.
we have one last instrument to talk about. It's the one that doesn't exist in our it doesn't exist in our tools, but it exists in the game. If we go down here to, I believe it's Shakuhachi 77. Or perhaps more familiar. This is the pine flute. It has a very, very strong attack to the point where it almost sounds silly. The bottom register? It's kind of fine, but right around here. So C3 is a bottom note. That sounds like the bottom one. That sounds like the bottom one, and... There's this really pronounced break here between C sharp 4 and D4. Above this, you get this really sort of do sound, by which I mean it sounds like do do do. So when I wrote a piece for this instrument, because of course I had to, it was a challenge, um, I actually tried to write melodies that stayed in this register, melodies that stayed in this register, but didn't cross. It worked pretty well. Uh, for the next thing I wrote, it, I didn't worry about that quite so much and it was still fine. But um, you have to be careful about that. It's pretty, it's a little weird at times. So, uh, let's hear how it sounds. So you can hear the switch to the high register there. If you want to look at the notes for that sometime, you're more than welcome to um, just, uh, just be aware of that break. Uh, it's not a bad instrument, certainly. Um, the thing about the shakuhachi is that if you hold a note for a while, you get this wonderful sort of vibrato sound. And short notes don't give it time to ring. Don't leave it time for that vibrato to kick in. And even, yeah, you kind of have to be at, sh at, sh at slower tempos in order to have long notes even last long enough for that to kick in. But it can be really beautiful when it does. All right. That is my not actually short, how long is this? Oh my gosh, almost 40 minutes. Introduction to all the different instruments in Clan Lord. Uh, <laughs> exhaustive, perhaps. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, in terms of actually how to get instruments in game, uh, you do have to be a bard beforehand. Uh, once you've got a bard part, you can wander over here to Hendrix's hut. And if you talk to him holding an instrument part and you're a quester, oh! Hey, I just got a silo. <laughs> I forgot about that. All right, fantastic. All right, I'm going to go play with my two toy. All right, everyone. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want to try out an instrument, if you've uh, started making music on your own program, uh, you've used MID2CL to the program, uh, if, you, if you Google MID2CL, all one word, no spaces, you should be able to find the tool that can uh, convert MIDI files into CL notation. And then you could take it up here to one of these practice rooms. And you can talk to someone to lend you an instrument. Um, <laughs> how about a guitar? Maybe another time. All right, cool. If you've got any questions, let me know. Otherwise, uh, have fun. I'm looking forward to hearing exciting new music in the lands. All right, bye everyone.